Good morning. <laughs> hmm. So today, um, the theme of trust came up. Doubt and trust. <laughs> yeah, doubt and trust. Yeah. Yeah, I'm feeling quite vulnerable at the moment when I think about trust. Um, I think what I've been feeling is how I've been trusting in my small self mm -hmm. for so long and how tiring that is to think that I've got to do something or even that something outside of me could possibly um, cause me to distrust. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was, I was playing in my mind, I thought, wow, if it was a course in distrust, I'd be a black belt by now. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty easy. Distrust seems very, very easy to do, but yet to trust. Just thinking about that, like, oh, you don't trust people. I mean, who does that? It's, it just seems very, very alien to trust, to really, really trust. And so when we get into something like The Course in Miracles, where a lot of it is all about trust and changing our minds about everything that we, that we think that we know, Trust plays a massive part in that. And it's like, there's always like this sort of like barrier I, no I notice in myself. It's like, yeah, I trust to this amount, but I'm gonna still stay with my um, own strength. And I think that what I've noticed is on this journey, it's like stepping forward, like, no, you actually don't know what your own best interests are. And if you can trust me a little bit more, um, I can show you something else. And it's like in between that gap is like this resistance comes up like, mm. oh my God, it feels so like tight to like not rely on this. Like surely I know best. Mm. I know what's best for me. So and what it, was happening with you this week? What was your experience this week that was coming up? Uh, <clears throat> I think for me, um, a big thing has been in my life that I made this pact with the ego in a way to, to never be told what to do. And so that's kind of been a lot of resistance for me in being told what to do. And so if I feel like someone else has another suggestion or idea other than mine, or maybe there's another movement, it feels like it's a complete hit against me. And it's like, no, the, the barrier comes down. Um, and it's like hard to like soften into that. Like, how can this be the best interest? And that's where the distrust comes in. It's like, this is your agenda. You want something to happen. And now I'm being asked to do something that I don't want to do. So then it's like the battle is, okay, so what is my agenda? So now my agenda is going to battle with your agenda. And it's like, I can see that like always in my mind, it's always like this, the, the, this struggle. Um, it's just me creating problems, me creating, okay, I want to battle with somebody, over trust, um, please create some distrust, and then, ah, oh, there it is, there you go, I told you, ha 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 ha, I'm right again, I can distrust you, and it's like, no, you're at, I'm actually creating it, and so one of my, my deep, deep lessons, which I'm really loving, and I just go over all the time in my mind, projection, makes perception and I just love that it's like it's just been so helpful for my mind to be like no I have projected this scenario out and now it's coming back to me mm. now if it's not a loving scenario then it's clearly of the ego and it just feels so ingrained this distrust it just feels very very deep for me mm. that like I can't remember really trusting anybody if I'm being honest it, it, before before going on this journey, it's mm. like, why would I do that? That's that's stupid. Mm. It just everyone knows you don't trust. You know, you trust yourself, but you don't trust the outside world because it's so fragmented. And when you believe in that so much, it's like, well, of course, I'm gonna have to look after number one. Mm. And then with the course of miracles, it's like, no, that's actually the trust is just simply in your mind. And everything that comes to you is simply to be healed or, or, or is simply love. And so it's like, it's kind of like a relief because in a way it's like when these scenarios play out, 
is I don't feel it as like this personal attack like it was before. You are trying to do this to me and you're not going to do it. So back off. It's like that. It's like, no, this is kind of grateful that like, wow, this is what I'm, I'm generating this and I'm generating it for a reason so it can be healed in my own mind. Exactly. So now I don't have to beat myself up over it afterwards, like, oh, you're talking to people in a terrible way, you're not trusting and whatever. It's like, Jesus knows. He's like, yeah, yeah I know you don't trust. I mean, that's obvious. That's why we're in this position. Like, mm. don't beat yourself up over it. <laughs> Clearly, I mean, who would trust the world? You'd be an idiot to we trust the world. We are being convinced. That's yeah. it. We are being convinced to put our trust in the, yeah in the correct way, like in, tr in God, exactly. in our brothers. Exactly. And, you know, it really reminds me of a beautiful video that I watched this week about Frances mm. talking about how to be happy. Mm. And she, the thing that really stuck with me was that she was saying, yeah, once you put your trust in God, every single time, like in your mind, just go again towards Him. There's nothing he cannot handle, <laughs> nothing that he won't convince you with. Mm. Because it's like, that's what our prayer, like every single moment, <sighs> just please convince me. Okay, I see this block now. I'm willing to give this over to you because I don't like the way I feel. And now it's like, mm. okay, I'm here. Please show me mm. a different way. Mm. Yeah, and it's been really exciting too for me to watch that that projection makes perception mm. because I could see a few examples like this week. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. Um, we have okay, we have said that we're gonna come together each morning to just set our intention for the day and set our prayer for the day and just be really clear on that and okay. <laughs> So, when I went towards him, like, proposing this idea, I, I was already like, oh yeah, he's just going to say no. He's just going to say no, and he's just going to think it's a bad idea. But still, I'm going to say it, because I need to say it. So, I, I told you, okay, Ken, I would like to just meet up in the morning and just set our intention for the day, because I've been feeling that with that clear intention, it's mm. like every block to that will just be, okay, I can give this over now. Mm. But my intention is to be so focused on God. Mm. So that was so inspiring for me. So I could feel it really, really inside with that, okay, this is my, this is the way I'm, I want to start every day and this is the way I want to be focused on because I know the blocks will come, but okay, I see this block now to be released. So. With that in mind, I go to him and I ask him, <laughs> okay, would you like to do this? He's like, yeah, I don't know, no. I'm not really feeling it <laughs> or something like that. You were like, and I was like, oh God, okay. Yeah, and then something happened that day. I don't, I don't remember what happened that day. I think you started looking oh, yeah. at how you're doubting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was, I started looking how I was doubt, doubting, doubting first mm. before saying anything. So that was just being reflected back at me. And Well, what you just said then is before you even asked me, you said, I doubt he's going to want to do this anyway. Exactly. And then you come and ask me. And then I say, yeah, I'm not really feeling that. And you go, oh, I told you so. Yeah, I it's knew, like, I knew told you. Wouldn't. Okay, yeah, I knew that was, that was going to happen. But it mm. was like I was already mm. creating the whole thing to be that way. Mm. And it was the next morning. I don't know, something happened that day that I started getting in touch with the doubts. And I could see, okay, it's actually me that I'm always thinking he's going to say no or something. And later that day, you told me, okay, I want to do it. I was like, okay, okay, that's perfect. The next morning we, we sit up there and I start saying, okay, this is my intention for the day. I was so excited. <laughs> I was like, really like, oh yeah, I even, I even was late for our meeting, like four minutes. And he said, yeah, you're, you're late. You know that, right? And I'm like, oh God. But it was like that thing still running there, that doubt. And 
Well, because that's why you were late, weren't you? Because you didn't think I would actually even turn up. Or so turn there I was waiting, and yeah. I'm like, you're four minutes late. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so we finally see it. Okay, I start saying my prayer or whatever, and then... Oh, yeah, I was praying. This is very important, because I was praying that I wanted to be certain, that I wanted <laughs> to be in my strength and to be in that trust, right? I say this prayer, and right away... He, I was like giving like this paragraph, like a prayer, right? Like, <laughs> and then he just said, yes, my focus is God today. And something, <laughs> just like two words or something like that. And I'm like, oh God. I said Jesus. Something like <laughs> Jesus. And I'm like, come on. <laughs> and he's like, Oh, like serious and closing his eyes and not even looking at me. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> but, you know, at that point, I closed my eyes and I was okay. Right in that point, I saw that, that I didn't like that. And then I thought, yeah, that's actually something that's going on with me in my mind. But it was just immediate. Okay, so this is something. What is it there? And then I saw so clearly he was just reflecting, reflecting that continuous pessimism in my mind. Like I was like, oh my God, I can see it. It's only in, in my mind. Mm. I can see that right before I go to him, I'm already doubting that it's a good idea. And it's like these thoughts are always on the background. Yeah, that's not going to be a good idea. No, that, does, that won't sound good. You will look stupid. Or... It won't work out. It won't work out, so don't even try it. But there's always like that voice, very negative voice underneath it all. And it was just like, wow. I was praying for certainty. And right after that, Boom, the prayer got answered, but it was for me to show me, okay, this is the block that's blocking you for you to be in your certainty. It's always these doubt thoughts running. Yeah, that's not a good idea. That's not going to work. You're not good enough or whatever. And it was like, wow. After that, it was just like continuous miracles coming in to convince me that it could be different. Yeah, because you felt the half-heartedness. That, 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 yeah, that was part of it. You, 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 you started to realize actually what I'm asking for. I'm still only asking for half-heartedness. Mm -hmm. And then that way I'm getting that reflection back. It's like quivering, like, oh, okay, I'm going to ask for it, but I'm not really sure this is correct. Or mm. Like in that uh, not certainty, mm. uncertainty. Mm. Yeah, it is that. Mm. So I was praying for, for that certainty. And it was like beautiful at that point. I could see, I remember that quote that I read on Christmas dinner. We had a beautiful Christmas dinner here and I got this quote that said, mm, half-heartedness won't no. take you into majesty. Something like that, mm. it's a little longer. But it was like, wow. If I'm not giving myself fully over to each thing I feel in my heart, it won't take me anywhere. Mm. It won't take me anywhere. And I could see that it was just a going into this deeper commitment in my mind mm. about what I really, really feel and what I really want in my heart is to be in, in that prayer, mm. just be in that connection with the Spirit. And... Ooh, that was so big for me this mm. week, yeah. Yeah, you saw that there was a strength underneath all of that. It was that when you started to know, I want to do this, whereas when you're coming to me of half-heartedness, I'm feeling it like... Yeah, you're I'm, just reflecting yeah, it. Yeah, I'm not, fe I'm not feeling... It. There's no, like, vibrancy to it for me to yeah. step into. Yeah. <laughs> and then you get your wish of, oh, I've been turned down again, rejected. Yeah, this is actually not going to work. And while you say that is. Um, is self-doubt mm. yeah, I could see that and I have these beautiful gorgeous mm. quotes that I want to share with mm. you but just hang on there because oh 
<laughs> okay, okay. That's good. the yeah. internet and the power went out for a few seconds, but I think you can hear me, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Thank okay. you. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we're having some techni technical issues here, but yeah, I guess it was just perfect so that the suspense could go up with the quotes that, I, that came to me. It was so beautiful. Um, yeah, it was so deep because when I read them, you know, I never cry out of joy, but I actually did when I read them. It was just, it went so deep. I couldn't believe it. I was laughing. It was just such a relief because I could recognize that it was trusting in my little self that was causing all the problem. And I would like to read a quote for you. Yeah. And this is, do you think I should read this one first? Whichever you feel. Yeah, there's the introduction. The, I'll, that's, okay, that's nice. I'll read this first. This is a manual for teachers, the introduction. And this says, teaching but reinforces what you believe about yourself. Its fundamental purpose is to diminish self-doubt. This does not mean that the self you are trying to protect is real. I just love that sentence. This does not mean that the self you're trying to protect is real, but it does mean that the self you think is real is what you teach. So it's like that prayer to really connect with the higher self and trust in that. And then here for the manual for teachers, uh, on number seven, should healing be repeated? I think that's for Nicoline. <laughs> Listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> One of the most difficult temptations to recognize is that to doubt a healing because of the appearance of continuing symptoms is a mistake in the form of lack of trust. As such, it is an attack. Usually it seems to be just the opposite. It does appear unreasonable at first to be told that continued concern is attack. It has all the appearances of love, yet love without trust is impossible, and doubt and trust cannot coexist. And hate must be the opposite of love, regardless of the form it takes. Doubt not the gift, and it is impossible to doubt its result. This is the certainty that gives God's teachers the power to be miracle workers, for they have put their trust in Him. I think we should, I think we should move into a prayer. Oh, I just need to read this first. This one. Mm. I'll just read the main sentence. Mm. And then here, the other paragraph that I really felt is the real basis for doubt about the outcome of any problem that has been given to God's teacher for resolution is always self-doubt. And that necessarily implies that trust has been placed in an illusory self, for only such a self can be doubted. This illusion can take many forms. Perhaps there is a fear of weakness and vulnerability. Perhaps there is a fear of failure and shame associated with a sense of inadequacy. Perhaps there is a guilty embarrassment stemming from false humility. The form of the mistake is not important. What is important is only the recognition of a mistake as a mistake. So we'd like to invite everybody into thinking about where they're not trusting.
and maybe some doubts that they want to raise up. And as that last part just said, it's simply mistakes in the mind. And I'm just going to read some parts from I trust my brothers who are one with me. So if you feel you can close your eyes and go inwards. Trusting your brothers is essential to establishing and holding up your faith in your ability to transcend doubt and lack of sure conviction in yourself. When you attack a brother, you proclaim that he is limited by what you have perceived in him. You do not look beyond his errors, rather they are magnified, becoming blocks to your awareness of the self that lies beyond your own mistakes and past his seeming sins as well as yours. Perception has a focus. It is this that gives consistency to what you see. Change but this focus and what you behold will change accordingly. Your vision now will shift to give support to the intent which has replaced the one you held before. Remove your focus on your brother's sins and you experience the peace that comes from faith in sinlessness. The faith receives its only sure support from what you see others past their sins. For their mistakes, if focused on, are witness to sins in you, and you will not transcend their sight and see the sinlessness that lies beyond. Therefore, in practicing today, we first let all such little focuses give way to our great need to let our sinlessness become apparent. We instruct our minds that it is this we seek, and only this, for just a little while. We do not care about our future goals, and what we saw an instant previous has no concern for us within the interval of time wherein we practice changing our intent. We seek for innocence and nothing else. We seek for it with no concern about now. With no concern but now. A major, major hazard to success has been involvement with your past and future goals. You have been quite preoccupied with how extremely different the goal this course is advocating are from those you held before. And you have also been dismayed by the depressing and restricting thoughts that even if you should succeed, you will inevitably lose your way again. How could this matter? For the past is gone, the future but imagined. These concerns are but defences against present change of focus in perception, nothing more. We lay these pointless limitations by a little while. We do not look to the past beliefs and what we will believe will not intrude upon us now. We enter in the time of practicing with one, in one intent, to look upon the sinlessness within. So for a little while, without reg regard to past or future, should such blocks arise, we will transcend them with instructions to our minds to change their focus, as we say, it is not this, that I would look upon. 
I trust my brothers who are one with me. And we will also use this thought to keep us safe throughout the day. We do not seek for long range goals as each obstruction seems to block the vision of our sinlessness. We seek but for, secrease an instant for the misery the focus upon sin will bring and correct and uncorrected will remain. The world which, one, which once proclaimed our sins becomes the proof that we are sinless and our love for everyone we look upon attests to our remembrance of the holy self which knows no sins and never could conceive of anything without its sinlessness. We seek for this remembrance as we return our minds to practicing today. We look neither ahead nor backwards. We look straight into the present and we give our trust to the experience we ask for now. Our sinlessness is but the will of God. This instant is ours, willing one with his. everyone for being here today with us yeah, thank you this experience mm. that's our prayer to go into a deeper trust mm. to be convinced yeah yeah thank you very much for joining us thank you